Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day Gamers, and welcome. So today we're going to be discussing some new features that are planned for Space Engineers. Now, if you didn't read the developer blog post, you will not know what these are, and you'll be being informed right now if you did. Now, we're discussing planet scenarios and new multiplayer, so if you're a Space Engineers fan, your heart's probably stopped by now, and you're going into cardiac arrest, but if you're not, then we'll continue with the video. Now, the first thing I want to look at is planets. So, planets have been discussed many times by the players, and they've wanted them for a long time, and I, myself, I know I've requested planets and really tried to ramp up the intentions of getting them. Now, moving on, they said that in the early access, when Space Engineers was first released, they were very pessimistic about planets. They didn't really think that it was possible. But by the end of 2014, with the procedurally generated asteroids, when they were created, they realized that they could actually create much bigger asteroids, more like eight kilometers across. And then they discussed the planets with the team and they realized that they just didn't want to do big asteroids. They wanted to take it to the next level and do planets with everything. Now, emphasis on with everything. And these are some of the features that they list. So they've listed decent size, gravity affecting ships too. So that means you could possibly pull, be pulled into a planet if you're not strong enough. Atmosphere. So there's going to be some way maybe having to penetrate into that atmosphere, protecting your ship. There's a, there's a lot of different things they can do with this here. Now they've got terrain, so they've got mountains, canyons. They might have different sorts of biomes, so they could have desert. I mean, it's really a lot of features and they could do a lot of different things with it. And they've got vegetation, so they want trees, bushes, grass. And a little bit later on in this post, they, they would talk about they don't just want planets with asteroids, every single one resembling Earth. They want some barren ones as well. Now, the next question they kind of pose is how big should the planet be? Now, the current planets they're working around is 20 to 50 kilometers. That is considerably quite small. Actually, compared to Earth, it's, it's not even a planet. Even Pluto has a radius of 1,184 kilometers. So these planets are rather small. But then when we actually start to think about it a little bit longer, these are sort of planets that are going to take up the full size of your screen when you get close. So they talk a bit here, they tried some prototypes, big asteroids about 8 kilometers in diameter, and it looked pretty big with the sizes and gameplay. Uh, and that's when gameplay issues emerged, of course, which is the size of such a planet. Um, imagine a planet with a radius of 100 kilometers they go on to talk about. You could get to the planet, fill your screen from top to bottom, and when you have a decent field of view and the video options and you're still 73 kilometers away from the planet's surface, it would take uh, 104 meters a second, about 12 minutes to actually reach the surface of the planet. And they, they say that seems a little bit too long. But at the same time, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting sort of complex concept. So they talk a little bit about maybe increasing the maximum speed, but they talk about that then causing further gameplay issues and mechanics with physics themselves. So... They go a little bit further into the difference, saying the circumference of the actual planet is 100 kilometers, is a 628 kilometers. Them traveling at a maximum speed, it would take 90 minutes to actually fly around the planet. Now that that's quite interesting itself. And then they say the solution that they're thinking of of changing the maximum speed, but it's too problematic, like I said before, because they have issues like I've shown with the um, what was the little bit of a cannon that I built a few weeks ago, where the actual bullet goes through the wall, the actual item you fire, and they say the higher you go, then the more issues occur like that. So they talk about sizing the world options, configuring the maximum, and just trying to release planets at a size where they work within the game without altering the maximum speed. So it's really cool indeed to actually have a look at and read a bit further on. Now the next thing is gravity. They talk about gravity and planets having gravity with a similar sort of effect to Earth's gravity. The distance from the planet will gradually decrease. The bigger the planet, the more gravity. And they plan on gravity affecting ships like we talked about before. Now if we move on to the atmosphere, they talk about the atmosphere in a very interesting way. So they said we plan to add atmosphere to certain planets. When there's an atmosphere, there'll be vegetation. Other planets will be barren without atmosphere. And vegetation will be very similar to what you see in medieval engineers. Now, to achieve such atmospheric effects, we plan on using sort of a, a special shader which takes into account sun direction, air density, and the distance light travels through the air and other parameters. It could also be possible to breathe freely and refill your oxygen tanks on a planet and an atmosphere. Now, the atmosphere breaking through it is a very interesting sort of feature for me. Like, will an entry, could you could you possibly bounce off? The bounce off like you hear about in these sort of space sort of mechanics. If you enter through the wrong sort of angle, will the ship break up and create like sort of an ultimate mess? But I don't know. It's all for you guys to discuss and try to work out solutions for. 
Now, the visibility distance in Space Engineers is default at 20 kilometers, and if you fly towards a 30 kilometer asteroid or planet, you'll see nothing until it suddenly appears as a big planet, as right bang in front of you. And I think that sounds a little bit weird, they say it does as well. So they had to come up with some sort of solution, and the option was to increase the view distance, but there's still a limit to 50, 70 kilometers because of the Z buffer precision. And they, they go in a little bit more into detail about how they do it, and they said that they're gonna render things basically on different levels, so ships would still render at the shorter difference, but where planets would be able to be seen from 10,000 kilometers away with a, probably a lower sort of render model and so on, but still, it's a better way than just having it pop in when it's right in your face and scaring the living crap out of you, especially if you fly in a ship and you think it's all clear. Now, the final thing they comment on is scenarios, and with the implementation of scenarios in the last few months, it is, it's something that I thought is a bit of a 50-50 thing. Players already have the ability to create whatever they want, but they want to use it as more of a way of giving them players that want a little bit of direction within a number of missions, the ability to build their own missions or play a certain set, as well as train players on how to get used to the game. Now, the final thing we want to look at is the new multiplayer. And now, since the original update of multiplayer, that was back in January 2014, almost a year ago, the multiplayer itself was written very quickly for a very test sort of configuration and they've spent months and months rewriting the multiplayer from scratch so that they can actually fix it and implement many of the features that they wanted to implement before, such as the different sort of spawn rates of players. So say, for instance, if I was on a server and um, Sage was working far, far away in the distance, I don't really need to know, my computer or server information doesn't really need to know what he's doing until I get close to him. So they've rewritten it and made it just a lot more performance. Very good indeed. Now the new multiplayer client, won't be connected to every other player but the server the server will validate data from the client so proportion the position update will just be a lot better for players to try to understand now the current multiplayer uses the steam networking layer which also allows us to easily send data between players and it's very easy to use and i think they're deciding to actually switch to a much more complicated way of networking it but at the same time they'll be allowed to do more with it so stay tuned for more information they say and that's pretty much all we have. So we've got some rather interesting features to look forward to. We've got planets, we've got the scenarios, and this new multiplayer formula that hopefully will solve a lot of the lag, the connection issues that we bump into. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'd really like to hear what you have to say about this blog post. There'll also be a link for it in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.